Hello, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about November sales. We've got two grand openings and two events. Let's get into it. Please excuse my off to bed look here. It is 101 on Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great day and no drama and all goes smoothly. Um, but I was about to go to bed and then I was like, oh gosh, I never filmed my video. I meant to do it on Wednesday and I never did it. And I've been wanting to film this. I was going to do it last week and then I ran out of time. I didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, and I don't know why I said I was going to bed. I still have things I'm working on. I just pulled these out of the dryer. I always pre-wash all my fabrics, but check out how these turned out. They're pillows. Ah. Oh. So cute. I have four of them. So two of them are going to Dulles in December, December 10th and 12th through 12th. And then the other two are going to be going to Maid, which is in uh, the village at Leesburg. So I need to go ahead and put that in my bag um, to go. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling um, and start talking numbers. So there are two grand openings and two events. Let's talk about the grant. I, I have all my like notes on a piece of paper here, so I don't forget to tell you guys something. Um, and then I'll be putting like numbers up on the screen of different data because uh, I think it's really great to share, you know, how different people do different things. And so you guys can get an idea of what's out there. Anyways, so the first grand opening was made. It, uh, made is not the whole name. It's made artisan market or something like that. And that is, uh, the owner's name is Kathy. She's great. She's so kind. And um, so anyway, so that space, she has it set up to where you could have a 10 by 10 space. Um, you could have it for a month. You could have it for a weekend. You could have it for a day. Or you could have a shelf. Same concept. And it's a pop-up. So it's only November and December. Uh, November 5th or something to January 2nd. And that's it. That's all it's going to be open. The other store, Lazy Daisy, uh, it's a permanent location, um, it, both in the village at Leesburg, and um, she has other stores in Fredericksburg, Spotsy, Mechanicsville, or something like that. Like, more in, um, around Richmond area, or where her stores is. This is her eighth or ninth store, I believe. And, um, again, very kind woman. Uh, her name's Michelle, if I didn't say that. Um... And so Lazy Daisy is open seven days a week and Maid is open four days a week. So uh, in the Maid space, I have a 10 by 10 and I'm there all of December or all of November, all of December. So it's $600 a month. Um, opening weekend and it's open Thursday through Sunday. Opening weekend, I made $42, which was not as great as I wanted to. However, the whole store is not full. So um, it's been open for three weeks now. So every week new people have been coming in each day. There's different people each weekend. There's different people and slowly it's starting to fill up C starting this weekend. Cause tomorrow's black Friday. Um, she told me that, uh, the store is, I can't remember if it's full this weekend or if it's full next weekend, but starting December, the whole thing is full. All the spots are filled. So if you've already been, go ahead and go back and check it out because there's different stuff. I know personally in my booth that opening, I did not have the same stuff as I have now. Even my whole layout is different because I had to reserve stuff when I went to Dulles. Uh, when I say Dulles, I mean the Dulles Expo Center. Uh, when I went to Dulles, I had to reserve enough stuff to be able to sell at that. So now I have a bunch of different stuff in my space and there's new people, there's new stuff. So if you've already been, go again because things are not the same. Anyways, so uh, I only made $42 the first opening weekend, but you know, we're still trying to get the word out there. We're still trying to get foot traffic. Um, and it's fantastic that I don't have to be there. Like I can go to work and make money. And then if I sell something, that's great. So it's so nice that also like, I feel like if I'm sitting there staring at someone, it's, they're not as likely to buy something. Like it's cool that I get to talk to someone about the product and what the story is back behind it. But I feel like sometimes I hurt my booth. Plus I think people are expecting someone older and not me. So I feel like I personally hurt my booth, but I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Anyways, so uh, $600 a month 
and it's not 30 days because it's only open four days a week so it's 16 days and then since then um a lot more i added more stuff and we've gotten a lot more foot traffic the tree lighting in the village at leesburg was this past friday like today is thanksgiving um last friday was the tree lighting and that brought up a lot more business in the whole whole shopping center lazy daisy lots more sales um made lots more sales so you know the whole village was just pumping with people so anyways that helps too so since then i've now made 171 dollars. so it is like increasing a lot so traffic is definitely coming up and like i said there's more people so i'm very optimistic and we still have all of december so i'm interested to see i'll do another video in december and we'll see how things are going then anyways next door uh lazy daisy so in lazy daisy i have a um uh, floating space is what it's called. So I only have my cards there. I don't have any of my sewn items and I have um, I don't have a card rack. It's like a basket with my cards in it. I have uh, greeting cards and stationary sets and I sold one greeting card uh, opening weekend and then since then I oh I forgot to talk about the system anyways um, and then I've sold one stationary set and this is what I was going to say. As far as I know, I've only sold these two things in three weeks. However, I could be wrong because how Lazy Daisy does their system is that, the, uh, so you put tags on everything and then the tag comes off. And then at the end of the day, the person who did the register um, takes a picture of it and posts it in the Facebook group. So it's totally possible that like I'm missing a tag or I missed a post and I didn't see it um, to see that I made a sale. So I'll have a better idea once the check is cut at the end of the month if I've sold more stuff. Um, but the maid system, she has, uh, an electronic system and if something sells, I know it right away or I don't get like a notification, but, uh, I can check in on, I'll show the pictures. Um, it's online and it shows me each item. It shows me how much they take from it. Cause they take a percentage because I'm not there, which makes total sense. I'm totally fine with that. Um, anyways, so two different systems, two different ways that it works uh yeah so that's what's going on with that again lazy daisy opened the same weekend as made so it's only been three weeks you know um michelle's new to this area all her stores are in other places so you know trying to get again the knowledge out there um and the tree lighting was really good so i'm very optimistic with both stores that there will be a strong increase in the month of december so we'll just have to wait and see in next month's video how it goes Okay, so on to the two events. So I, it was a rough two weeks. So the maid uh, space opened on the Thursday. Yeah, on the Thursday. And then the Lazy Daisy opened on the Saturday. And then that coming up week, uh, I had Great Beginnings, which was a church event on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on Thursday was set up for Dulles. Friday, Saturday, Sunday was Dulles. And, oh, and when the maid and the Lazy Daisy was happening, I was working Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <sighs> it was like the roughest two weeks. And there was like other things going on in my personal life that were not very good. And, oh my goodness, I like piled way too many things in such a short period of time and having my stuff in so many different places was so stressful everyone has a different tag and everything has a different system and it's like oh my god <laughs> if I if when I do this again next year and have my stuff like in different spaces and I need different displays and I need different tags like I definitely plan to like allocate it better next year because I bit off more than I could chew Anyways, so the Great Beginnings event. This was a preschool in Leesburg. I don't have any association with this preschool. Literally how I found this thing was when I was searching for events back in April when I started doing this. Finding events is very, very hard, by the way, and making sure that they're legit. There are so many scams out there and it's scary. Like It happens all the time that people will sp submit like 30, 50, 100, $200 for an event and it's a scam. Someone just takes your Venmo money. I do not do Venmo. Uh, ever. I don't do it with friends, nothing. Uh, they'll take your money, your PayPal, Venmo, whatever money, and they'll just, huh, huh, you gave me your money. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. There's no event. It doesn't exist. We're fake. 
it so many scams out there anyways so still trying to learn like what's real what's fake i found this like old facebook group about a 2019 event at this preschool and there was an email so i sent an email uh, this was back in april and i said hey you know i'd like to do your event if it's happening this uh fall let me know you know and just put a shot out in the dark right and see what happens this woman emailed me back heather super kind woman I can't remember her exact response, but I believe it was something along the lines of, you know, uh, as of right now, we don't know uh, with COVID if the event will happen. We want to have the event, but we're not sure. And I said, great, just let me know if it happens. I'd be happy to do it. You know, Leesburg is nearby to me, so I like doing events in Leesburg. Uh, anyway, so then she emails me in November, October. Uh, October-ish, maybe September, maybe late September is when she emails me. She's like, hey, the event's on. Here's the link. Here's how you sign up. Go ahead and uh, submit your application. And I was like, okay, great. So I submitted my application. And on my part, it was a misunderstanding on who was running the event and what the target audience was going to be. So I read it as like, so it's the preschool of the church. And I don't know, I was thinking that, like, the church was more involved than the preschool. I don't know why I thought this. And I thought, like, the target audience would be, like, I don't know, little old church ladies. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. And I didn't... I, my fault that, it, obviously, it's run by the preschool. So it's more associated with the preschool, not the church. Anyways, so I show up at this event. Uh, it was... A Tuesday night and a Wednesday morning, which was super weird and only a short period of time too. Uh, six to eight on the Tuesday at night and then nine to 1230 on the Wednesday. So only like five hours total, which most events are about four hours one day or maybe five or six hours. Anyway, so weird times in sh short blocks. So I show up and there and I thought also that it was like people like me, like handmade type things because I'll show the flyer like red is like artisans and stuff and when i show up um super super kind woman oh my goodness heather she was a bit much for me actually in the first moment of like hey how are you and i was just like oh hold on i need a minute i gotta go get set up and stuff and but um she was such a bubbly happy person like so great to work with anyways so she um there was about 12 of us i believe and eight of them were MLMs, so like pyramid scheme, ah, pyramid scheme type things, like Mary Kay, Sensi, that sort of deal. And then there was me, there was a cookie lady, there was a um, cooking person, and then there was a person doing books. Um, but like I said, other than that, it was all MLM type deal. And I was like, um, this is not what I thought it was going to be, but. It was $30 for the two days, and I was like, hmm, I really can't complain, right? It's $30. It's like, trying something new. Let's see what happens. Anyways, so the event goes on at the nighttime, right? And I enjoyed the time. I thought it was great, you know? I went to McDonald's beforehand, got myself some nuggets, you know? It, it was fine. It was good. And, oh, and also she had the table there, so that was really awesome. So I really only had to bring my stuff, which or my uh, product, which was really awesome. So, anyways... I set up my table. Ready? Go. <laughs> Go. Right there. Clap. Clap! That was actually really good. And there's like barely any customers. And the idea of the customers was that it was the parents of the preschool. So again, I don't know what I was thinking. I, my fault. I misinterpreted. So there's barely any customers walking around. However, the first night, I had three sales and made $38. So I made my booth. And I've done worse in that period of time at a larger event. So I went home so confused. Oh, and then I got to leave my stuff there and then we uh, went again in the morning. And I was like, you know, I can't complain about anything because even though there was like seven customers in the place, the people that talked to me bought something. So... And I made my booth back. I made $8. I made my McDonald's. I made my dinner and I made my booth. So I don't know. So I went back in the morning and I just like kind of confused. And also like I was working on stuff while I was there. So I was productive. I was like getting keychains done, getting gift packs made. So all in all, it was a productive, good money-making time. 
So uh, Wednesday morning, the idea was it was 9 a.m. that the preschoolers get dropped off at 8.50 and then the parents will come walk around after they drop off the kids. Because I was so confused. Like, why are we going for like two hours in the morning? It doesn't make any sense. But I was like, all right, I'll go along with it, you know. So again, barely any customers the whole morning, but it's calm. I'm getting stuff done, whatever. I'm at another event. I'm meeting new people. It's great, you know. I end up making seven sales for $118. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, and the whole, like, like, I have no complaints. Like, I was, like, so shocked at this event. Like, when I went in and, like, I saw all the MLMs and then I was like, oh, gosh. Like, and then there was not very many customers. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, and there's something else I forgot. Hold on. Pause. When I got there on, um... Thursday, Tuesday. Oh my gosh. When I got there on Tuesday, Heather had like little gift bags for us. Oh my gosh. It was the sweetest thing. So she had this form, um, for like a tax deduction. I don't know. Like, I know when you do the taxes, you can put your fees, um, for doing, um, events as a write-off, but I don't know if it's because it's like church related, if this is a different type of write-off for doing the event with the church, but like my fee of $30 was a donation to the church is what she said. And um, so there was a little water bottle. I couldn't even eat it. I was just so happy. Like, oh, it was so sweet. There's some little pretzels, a choc two chocolates. And if you remember when I did my Christmas in July event, I put together gift bags for my uh, vendors that I had. And I had said in my video, like, oh, it would be so kind if someone did this. But obviously, like, you don't have to at all. Like, uh, anyways, so... It was so cute. There's little mints. And then there was like a handwritten note, like with sweet words and the Wi-Fi password. Uh, I just, I just left this event so confused and like, it was not what I expected at all. And I was so pleasantly surprised. And like I said, the commute was great. And um, yeah. So anyways, I will 100% do it again next year. It was fantastic. Heather was great. But I was just so confused. So I, oh, and then the other thing, they had these raffles, the door raffles. And um, so people were putting in their raffle tickets. And then at the end of the event, she's like, do you guys want a raffle ticket? And we're like, sure, why not? And uh, so she let the vendors put their names in the raffle. Like I donated it a box of stationery. Each person donated one thing. I ended up winning the raffle for the pie lady. So I need to go redeem it with her. But it's like a cotton candy, not a cotton candy, uh, candy cane, a candy cane pie. And I was like, that is so cool. Like, I never win anything. Anyways, fantastic event. Not what I expected at all. No little old church ladies. There was like maybe two, but not what I expected at all. But it was fantastic. It was productive. It was easy because they already had the table there. 100% would do it again. Highly recommend. 100%. Anyways, on to the next event. So next event was at Dulles. The next day, I had to go on Thursday and go set up. Again, like I've said, I have my stuff in 50 different places. And I have my signs in different places. And I have my bags in different places. So trying to keep everything straight, keep my stuff tagged right, not pull inventory from one store when I need it in another store. Displays, I only have one card rack. So all of these things, trying to make sure I have it in the right spot, I had to like go get my sign from made and swap it out with another sign. If you don't want uh, follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because you'll see updates on daily things uh, that I don't post on here. So things like when I uh, made my new sign. Anyways, so, and I had my whole day planned of like going to go set up Thursday morning. If you haven't watched my video from when the whole setup situation happened, go ahead and watch that video. And I hope that if you have watched that video already, um, I wasn't, the video in no way was I trying to disrespect or throw shame or anything at the event company. It was my fault. I know I made a mistake. I was just disappointed that I did not receive any sympathy or any, let's work together. Let's try and find a solution. That was what frustrated me the most in that you don't know how someone's day is going and how one thing might just be the icing on the cake to just crumble the whole cookie. You know what I'm saying? I know I use like four different references right there. But anyways, um, set up Thursday, ended up getting set up. 
the guy next to me, <laughs> so when I set up Thursday night, I, I wasn't angry. I wasn't sad. I just wasn't like in a good mood. I was very knocked down. I was very unmotivated. I had no drive at all. And I was just put my headphones in, went in and just tried to set up. And um, the way that it works when you do an event at Dulles is sometimes people pay for um, sidewalls. So in our row of four or five, row of five, the first person was a jewelry person. They had a sidewall. Next woman was a, um, what are those things? A Russian doll, uh, like inside one another was her spot. Ne uh, wall. And then there was Andrew, the guy who uh, writes and illustrates his children's books. Fantastic. His link is down below. Um, it was his booth. I did not pay for a sidewall, neither did he. My booth, they paid for a sidewall. Jewelry women. Fantastic as well. I, I'll link everybody I can down below. Anyways, so our booths kind of like looked like they were together. And when we were setting up, like I was like not speaking much and like I bet he was like oh this is gonna be the person I have to be next to for the next three days oh my gosh you know like but um like I had trouble like putting together one of my tables and he like came over and helped me and I really appreciate it and then the next morning I told him I was like I'm sorry like I just had a really bad day yesterday I just didn't want to talk like I sorry if I like gave the wrong impression or whatever and he was like no worries no worries at all and it, he was a delight to be next to all weekend it's so nice when you meet someone and uh, you share like morals and political views and whatnot and can just talk and have a conversation and not worry about everything that you say and that someone's gonna be offended because you always offend someone all the time. You're always gonna offend somebody. You're never gonna make everybody happy. I bet you I've said something in this video already that I offended someone. So you just gotta get over it. Anyways, so the event company uh, for November versus the event company that I was with in October and will be in December, two different people. And these people that I was with in November do uh, Virginia Beach. So they did an amazing job with the decorations and they had music. If you remember my video from last month, that was one of my complaints about the people in October. Uh, they're, but they're also new to like planning events. So I, they're, I know they're trying to like get all the pieces together. Anyways, um, uh, they had the music going, but there was issues with the music. It like would cut out and then go in and then turn up and turn down. I don't know what was going on in the music, but it was on. They had uh, red and white decorations rather than the black walls and everything. So it was very Christmassy, very happy. Uh, they had a Santa. They did drawings just like the other one did. Um... There was like candy canes and snowflakes all over the place. So they like decorated way more than the other people did. But the other people, that wasn't a Christmas event. So what would they have decorated to? I don't know. But it was cool to just like see something different, work with a different company and see how it went. Anyways, rambling on. Uh, so that one was $600 for three days. And on Friday and Saturday, it was 10 to 6 and Sunday, it was 10 to 5. And, oh, and they also did charge to get in just like the last company did. These people charged uh, $8 for tickets for adults. But you could, like, somehow get a ticket to come back the next day for free or something, I think. Um, anyways. Uh, oh, the other thing that was new. So, because I had my stuff in two different spaces. So, the maid space had all of my... Um, regular four foot and six foot tables two four foot two six foot uh regular height i went and i bought new tables which come up to a higher height and i've used those in the space at dulles i bought six tables but i only ended up using five and then uh so i like had a higher booth which also so our little sidewall thing in between us um i had my uh table higher than it so people all weekend thought andrew and i were one booth all weekend people were asking me that i mean there's nothing wrong with it i have nothing against the guy but it was like i should have like so on saturday i ended up moving my table the other way and like you could see the separator a little better and it was like oh okay it's like two booths anyways so um on friday i had nine sales and made 96 dollars 
So, you know, I've had worse events. I've had better events. So I was hmm, disappointed, but not really, you know, I learned new things, met new people. Anyways, uh, nine sales, $96. Uh, the next day, so I was pretty slow all morning. And then even though the place, oh, that was the other thing. This place was packed. Compared to October, this place was packed. So they did a great job getting customers in. Um, Saturday, I did not do that great in the morning, even though there was a ton of people. I saw so many people walk by. I changed my booth a little, and in the afternoon, I did much, much better. And if you know anything about me, I'm all about numbers, and that's where I see, you know how people see signs? I see signs and numbers. My sales at the end of the, of the day, I ended up having 17 sales, and I sold $222 worth of product. 22 is my lucky number. When I changed my layout and um, I put the strong uh, focus on the reusable towels and the jar openers, which were two of my like newer, had more of products this weekend, I did fantastic. I sold like six um, reusable towels and about 10 of the jar openers. And I was blown away, like what? So, and I had all these ideas of, okay, I'm finally starting to learn what works. Also, first time ever this has happened to me. So I post, I try to be very on social media, even though personally I do not like social media. For my business, I try to be out there, make sure all my events are known. As far as I know, I've never had someone come to my event because they saw it online. However, this week, I, and the other thing is, I would not know unless you told me. If you're watching this video and then you come see me, please tell me. I don't know if you don't tell me. I, sorry, I don't know what you look like if you're just watching this. Anyways, so this woman comes up and she tells me, I was here in October and you told me that you were going to have more of the towel patterns. And I was like, this is what I got. Because she came in the afternoon and some of the new patterns had already sold that I brought in that morning. And um, it was so cool that someone came back. And, oh, and she also told me that she went to Leesburg to look for the towels and that I didn't have them there. I don't know if she specifically went just to look for my towels or if she, like, she happened to be in there or whatnot. But it was that I don't know if she knows how significant that interaction was to me. But to me, that interaction was so significant. And she did end up buying towels from me. The fact that someone came back, not that she came to the expo center just for me. I know she didn't. She came for all the other stuff. But the fact that she came back to me, she came back for the product that she wanted. I had that product. I didn't have enough of what she wanted. But you know, I'm trying. Um, and then she made the purchase and she spoke up and said something because I'm sorry, I wouldn't have remembered. Um, that was that was really good. That was such like an encouragement to me. And I learned so much. And anyways, I just had to share about that interaction. If the woman who did that, if you're watching this video, you made my day with that interaction. Anyways, so the 222, I sold $222 worth of stuff. Um February 22nd, 2022 is a very special day to me. And I've been, when I started, if you want to know my whole story about like when I started uh, with the paper and then now I have the sewing and this and that, like I'm constantly insulted about how I have paper company as my name and I have so much sewn stuff. So anyways, so I've thought for a while about separating my stuff, but I don't, didn't want to because that's a whole nother shop. That's a whole nother social media. That's a whole nother this. That's a whole nother that. Tags, business cards. When you do something with branding, it's a lot of work. So the feedback that I was getting on my sewn items versus the feedback I was getting on my cards and whatnot. And the experience that I've had over the past six months or about nine months. Um, I finally made the decision that I was going to separate my stuff and that I am no longer going to go to events and try to sell cards. My cards will no longer be available at events. I will not sell them. However, they will still be available on my Etsy and they will still be available when I do like a pop-up shop or like how they're available in Lazy Daisy. That's gonna remain. T 
Tansley Paper Co. is not disappearing. It's not dissolving. However, all the sewn items are getting pulled from the shop. This will not happen though until February because when you apply for events, you apply under a name. You apply under this is the business and this is what I'm selling. I had to tell them these are the items I'm selling. These are my price points and send photos and whatnot. So I cannot change my name. I cannot change what products I have until next year. So February 22nd, 2022, So Sustainable will be launching. I have all the links down below and I will use that name when I go to events and only sewn items will be available when I'm at an event. Um, and the encouragement that I also got from like talking to other vendors, if you remember from my last video, I talked a lot about how I got a lot of feedback from different vendors. Like, oh, this is looking great. Oh, I don't know about this, you know, this and that. And um, I recognized some of the people in November uh, from October, which was really great. And it was so nice to like, feel a part of the community and whatnot and start to be meeting people. Um, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very nervous. I'm very overwhelmed. But I think that the separation will be good and that it will help my sales. Also, sustainable is a very... Sustainable means multiple different things to me. I feel like my products are sustainable because I want to focus on my, you know, placemats, napkins, coasters, so you're not using paper. Um, it's also sustainable because if you watch my videos, my thrift hauls, I try to thrift some of my fabric. It's harder to thrift things like the flannel that I need for um, my towels. However, like this big, right here, this big roll of snowflake, which there's another one next to it, I got these for free off of Facebook Marketplace. It's actual fabric. I'm not turning a bed sheet into something. So that's fantastic. Anyways, uh, tangent, um, let's talk about the last day. So the last day, I had $230 worth of sales, 15 sales. Um, so that was, and, and oh, in both of those days, I have never sold over $200 worth of product at an event ever. So the fact that the first time it ever happened was on the Saturday when I made the change um, and it was $222 was very, very, very significant to me. The next day, um, I hit $230 in sales. So overall for the weekend, I made $548. This means that I was $52 short of my booth. So Based on October's video, when I was about 300 and change, $300 and change worth of money short for my booth, this month I was only $52. Now, I know that's not good. However, when I talk to people who have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, they tell me, oh, it took me three or four years till I started figuring out what's going on. I'm sorry, I don't have the patience for three or four years to start learning how to do it right. Like that's great for them that they had the perseverance to do that. I don't have three or four years worth of perseverance to not be making a profit. Anyways, so percentage wise, being $52 short of the 600, I was significantly closer than I did in October. And making all these adjustments, I feel very confident that if the customers are brought in for December, that I can make my goal. And another thing, so I had my custom order stuff. If you've ever checked out my Etsy, I do custom water bottles, custom tumblers, custom uh, baby munchkin bottles. And then I also do uh, custom embroidery on towels and on uh, napkins. So I have these items out for display, like a bookcase that you could custom order it and um, you could fill it out right there what you want. And uh, either you could come pick it up at the next event or I'll ship it to you. So I talked to this woman for probably... I don't know, a half an hour about doing tumblers for her kids for um, teacher thank yous. And this conversation was fantastic. It was all great. However, you don't know if that sale is actually going to happen. She ended up emailing me or sorry, texting me um, a couple days later saying, yes, this is how many I want. Let's go through with it. Yes, I want you to do this. And um, I gave her a discount and um, she's been fantastic to work with. So I got a $200 custom order from talking to her for half an hour. So did I make my booth or was I $50 short? I don't know, you tell me in the comments down below. So if I add her $200 onto 
what I made. That means I made $748 worth of sales. I didn't make $748 worth of profit. I made $748 worth of sales. So did I make my booth or did I not make my booth? I don't know. Um, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is that, so for all of November, I had $704 worth of sales. The average sale was $13.80. Um, so I definitely need to work on bringing up my average dollars per sales. I had 51 sales. Um, hundred, oh, so this Sunday I sold another 10 jar openers and, uh, like five or six of the towels again. It, like, I don't know what it was about the jar openers. This was the first time I ever had them and they were like flying. People love them. Such a strange item to me, but if people like that, people like that. A tutorial will be coming soon. I'll be sure to do that. Anyways, uh, last two things. So, the uh, Square Reader video, if you have watched that video, it's been getting a lot of hits lately. I think I'm at like 3,000 or 4,000 uh, views on that video, which is blows my mind. Um, I talk about a, my biggest, my biggest thing that I tell people when they use Square, turn on your optional tips. If someone's there giving you a transaction and they're already wanting to support you, if they want to give you an extra dollar, an extra two dollars, let them. All you do is turn on the optional tip. When you show them the phone, your total is $17.92. It's gonna ask you, I tell them, it's gonna ask you for an optional tip and then um, how you want your receipt. Okay, at event, most of the time I get like one, maybe two people to tip me. In November, I made $36.18 worth of tips. Do you know how much my fees were for Square for November? $17.74. That means that I covered my fee and my square reader was free for November and then some from the tips. So why wouldn't you turn it on? I look at it as I'm not collecting that money. I'm not trying to be greedy. I'm not trying to take some more. For me, if you want to support me a little bit, you support me a little bit. And then that money goes to helping me keep doing what I want to do because I don't have to pay something like a stupid square fee. So turn on your optional tips. Last point. So I talked about in my last video on Tuesday that $100, uh, $100 and change, I don't know, $118 or whatever, was free of the fabric. Uh, how I did that and how that money was free. Let me show you. All right, I've got my very fancy till here. I have reset it back to $100 in fives and ones. And this money right here is the additional um, cash that I made. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then two twenties. Ten. Uh, so two hundred dollars. So that's how my fabric was free, because the money I made in cash. This is now going into the bank. And that is the card that I use and I'm reinvesting. That's what you got to do with your business. You got to just keep reinvesting that money. So that money was free because I took my profit. I mean, this is not profit because I still had to lots of math, lots of business things, but still reinvest. That's how the hundred dollars of fabric was free. Great. If you made it this long, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know that I rambled quite a bit, but I had a lot of information I wanted to share with you guys. I was very excited to film this video. I, you know, I think it's very important that we share information. I think that it should not be so secretive. Like, not, oh my gosh, like how much did they make? This and that. Like, I want to know. You want to know. Like, I wish that when you applied for a, an event that it would tell you. Just simply, did the people make their booth back? You know, like when I was at Dulles, I wish they would have gone around and done a survey and said, yes or no question. Did you make your booth fee back? I don't want to know how much you make. Whatever, you can make $4,000. Did you make your booth? Yes or no. And then when you go apply for that event next year, it should say 68% of people made their booth back. That would make me way more confident in which events I would like to choose. Maybe even if it told you like what category those people were in. I don't know. But also there's a lot of factors. 
I would say a big, big factor is who is the person selling it and how does your product look? You could have the worst product in the world. If you are fantastic and your booth looks fantastic, that's all that matters. So I don't know. To me, I don't think it should be secretive. I hope that by me sharing this information, I've educated someone or inspired someone or shared something new that you didn't know. Um, I'm not trying to gloat. I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just sharing the information. This is facts. This is how much money I made. There's no debate. It's a number. There, It's a quantitative number. So that's how I feel about it. I know not other people. I know other people do not feel that way. So it's just is what it is. And if you like these videos, please let me know in the comments down below and I will keep making them because we need to share knowledge with each other and know which events are good, which events are bad who we should work with, who we shouldn't work with, what we should have in our booth, what we shouldn't have in our booth. So let me know your opinion. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll come out with some more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and happy Thanksgiving.